He is Jason Lock and Jason. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing. I'm doing well, buddy. It's been a while, but we're homies for life, brother. Yeah, I know. Well, you know it, that it's been a long while since NFL Network, but I spoke to you yesterday on your on your local yes, radio. You did. Give you a little run for your, your local airwave. You brought some gravitas <laughs> to the production. Thank you. My pleasure. That's what I bring. I bring that in truckloads. The gravitas. You throw it around, man. It's spilling out of your pockets. You're, I you try. are, you got it everywhere. All right, bro. So, uh, what's going on with the NFL right now and the decision for uh, in relation to everything going on with the COVID nineteen madness, Jason? I give you the floor on the yeah. owners' meeting and the NFL league, new yeah. league year in the draft. What do you know? Yeah, I'm hearing from multiple team employees that it's their understanding that the league meetings in West Palm Beach at the end of the month will not go on as planned. I reached out to the NFL about that and was basically told, yeah, we'll have something um, official on that. Uh, Stay tuned. Um, The draft, you know, they've got more time between now and the draft. But as we talked about yesterday, Rich, anyone who has to be there, including agents who represent players who would ostensibly be invited top 20 type picks, don't want to be there. You know what I mean? And they don't know how they're going to go into these these kids' houses and, and sit down with their moms and say, yeah, you know, discount everything that's going on. It's going to be a private, it'll send a private plane for us, and it'll be okay. You know, and it'll be a couple hundred thousand people in Vegas. Like, I, I just don't know how you sell that on a multitude of levels, unless there is some drastic recalibration in how um, this virus is spreading in this country you know, in the next few weeks. So they're not in a rush to make any decisions, but the way things are trending, I don't know anybody in the league who thinks that that's going to go as planned again, unless there is a major course correction um, in how the, you know, and how the virus is is being handled and and how it's spreading Um, in terms of the league year, the the league is sending out vibes that nothing to see here, but Rich, you know how that goes sometimes, right? It's a little bit of a trial balloon. And how many calls do we get from team presidents and owners? And how many clubs are letting us know, well, hey, we're not bringing players to our facility, so we're not going to be able to consummate deals fully because we're not giving someone $55 million guaranteed until they pass a physical. And we're not going to be conducting any physicals. And we're, You know what I mean? We've told people to essentially stay home. And if it was up to us, we'd close our facilities entirely. So it may be business as usual, but it ain't really business as usual. Interesting. I did not think of that aspect because uh, I've been just sitting here saying for the last hour plus, like, yeah, I mean, this stuff can be conducted by phone in terms of contracts. But when you're talking about multi millions of dollars, you need to actually get a physical done. And 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 how will that actually um, go down? I honestly didn't think about that, Jason. So, you know, and, and let's say there's an agreement, but it's just an agreement and we don't we're not going to take the physical for a week. And it still falls apart between one team and another team, and now they oh offer boy. this guy more money. You know what I mean? I think the verbals will could get a little complicated. And, and I'm taking it to the extreme, but as these teams are sitting back saying, well, we don't know exactly what the cap is yet, and we're not positive exactly what's going to end up with these figures in terms of the cap, I'm sorry, in terms of the franchise and transition, because we don't know which CBA will be operating under. You know, so we don't have all the information we need, so you start kind of planning out certain scenarios. Well, man, if all hell does break loose on Monday, what are the worst-case scenarios? And there's some that um, – could leave a lot of people peeved on either side, the player community or the team community. Interesting. Um, wow. Okay. So then let's take it one step at a time. Jason Lock and Fora from CBS Sports here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, what are you hearing about the vote for the collective bargaining agreement? That is the first major domino yeah. to tumble here on that front. You know, Everything, and, and I'll be honest with you, today has been such a scramble keeping on track of the meetings and the draft and the league year and what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, so much in flux. I haven't doubled back with, with a lot of agents and players today to kind of take, you know, caucus where things stand now. With this virus being like it is and with professional athletes now being, um, you know, we've, we've got cases of, of known infections and, and spreading. Does that change some guys? calculus you know someone who hasn't voted yet does he say wait a minute there's so much uncertainty in the world right now do i want to sign any kind of 10-year deal about anything you know i I don't know um Hmm. up until 48 hours ago talking to especially the the rank and file you know agents who represent primarily guys on veteran minimum contracts um players who make well below you know the league average um most of those guys were still going to vote with their pocketbooks which i understand completely 
But you just kind of wonder, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, well, literally every five minutes, there's some massive announcement that we never would have fathomed, right? That we never would have considered, even thought about being a possibility a week ago. Does that change this for some people? I, it, it, you know, it may. Hmm. But what were you hearing, I guess, before all the COVID-19 madness no, began I think to... that guys were going to do what made sense for them, which was, hey, I'm probably only in this, you know, if I'm lucky, three to five years. And another $100,000 and an easier path towards pension and less risk in the preseason where I'm getting hurt in a game that doesn't matter anyway. And... um more jobs being created, which means maybe I do get a third contract instead of just one or two. That made real time sense for a lot of guys when they sat down with their wives, you know, and had a glass of wine and said, okay, let's look at the pros and the cons. You could understand why a lot of players would say, I understand that the best eighth grade quarterback on the planet might hate this deal in 2026. Or uh-huh. whatever, but you know what I mean? For me right now and for our family, another $100,000 this year and probably next year and maybe a chance to squeeze out another contract after that because most guys are going year to year. That's, you know, you're gonna be, it's going to be hard to convince the misses that that's not what makes the most sense for us. Right, 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 right. Jason Lockenfora here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And then obviously the way that goes affects franchise tagging. Can you explain that conversation to uh, fans that might be uh, interested in whether that affects a, a team? Whether we have figuring stuff whether out. Whether we have two or right. Yeah. So we've got the the CBA vote this weekend, and if it passes, um, the proposal gets one more vote, yay than nay. Uh, then we are no longer in the final year of the existing CBA. We're now into sort of a transition year into what becomes a decade-long CBA. And so teams would have, under the old rules, in the final year of a CBA, been able to apply a franchise and transition tag. If we're under the new rules, they'll just have one. Um, it doesn't affect a ton of teams, but if you're a fan of the Dallas Cowboys, the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Tennessee Titans, um, it, it certainly could affect you because can you keep a Barrett and a Winston? Can you keep two out of three, Tannehill, uh, Conklin, and Derrick Henry on the tag if, if you can't get anybody extended? You know, can you automatically, bam, hey, Dak, you're, you're, you're franchised, and hey, Amari, you're transitioned. Um, obviously, if you only have one of those to play with, your Dak is going to get it no matter what. Um, you know, but that that may, you know, and look, Amari's she's probably gonna be able to hit the market no matter what, and Jerry's got enough money to bring him back no matter what. But it it that's another reason why there's uncertainty, and yet another reason why teams aren't talking turkey financially with agents the way they normally would be, because the landscape is still a little uneven. It's still a little. No one knows, you know, exactly what we're up against. A few more minutes left with Jason Lock and Four here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. We had our colleague Jeff Darlington uh, on on the air the other day to update us on his reporting that mm-hmm. eight, eight teams are interested in Tom Brady and whether he would be shocked if Brady goes back to New England. He said that there are still significant number of teams out there for Brady services. Don't sleep on the Bucks is what he kept saying uh, a couple of times. Uh, and also uh, did mention that he would be surprised if Brady did go back to New England. Today, uh, we heard from his colleague at ESPN, Diana Russini, who uh, said that she's hearing that perhaps it's not as many teams out there for Tom Brady's services. What can you tell us as we are maybe uh, on the precipice yeah. of a big free agent maneuver here? I, I think w- would six to eight teams, you know, tap Don Yee, his agent, on the shoulder and say, hey, we like your guy. You know, we, we would love to have an audience with the GOAT. Sure. Are there eight teams that they make sense for him and he makes sense for them? And this is a two-way street and he's got to be on board. You're recruiting him. I, I don't really know, Rich. I, I have a hard time seeing that you're going to tell me there's eight different jerseys I could picture Tom Brady in next year and that he could picture himself in. I don't know, but you still you listen. You play out the, the you know you play things out, but but all this uncertainty we've talked about has certainly um, pumped the brakes on, on Tom Brady really moving forward with some of these teams. At the end of the day, I, I have a hard time seeing him in Tampa. I mean, BA Bruce Arians can be very persuasive. I don't see him ending his career as a Tampa Bay Buck. Um, yeah. You know, the LA thing. If the Chargers came at him the right way, both ears would be wide open, and he would be willing to be wowed. Do they have it in their wherewithal, or do they even want to wow him? You know, that we'll see. I think the Raiders thing 
is interesting on some levels. Um, Tennessee, the relationship with, with the coach, but I, I still think Tannehill's back there. I've thought that all along. Um, is there a mystery team? Maybe. And then I, I have a lot of people want to rule out the Patriots, but there's no way in the world that Tom Brady's signing somewhere else without giving Robert Kraft you know, his full and undivided attention at some point in this process. And we'll see where the Patriots are in terms of market value and if they're willing to, to pay Tom Brady the way the market would. Um, if they are, then I'm, I, 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 have a hard time, I have a hard time ruling it out or saying I'd be shocked to see him um, retire as a Patriot. And honestly, Tom doesn't have all the information he needs to make these decisions yet. Did you mention the 49ers? I didn't. <laughs> I guess you could throw them in there. That's another one where I, I, what I've heard there doesn't lead me to believe that that's a strong possibility. Mm-hmm. But I look, nothing's impossible in a situation. I'm not going to say I'm not going to rule anything out. But from what I've heard, I don't, I don't think that's one of the, you know, you made me handicap it. I don't know that I'd put them, you know, in the three or four teams that I think it ultimately gets down to. Well, I mean, he, I think he would love to have that in the top two or three. I, I would, I, and again, and this is all conjecture, totally. But, um, you know, hometown team, finish up where he always wanted to, you know, as a kid play, parents nearby. They were seven minutes shy of winning it all. Why not use your goat, gorilla in the room, elephant in the room, bull in the china shop status to see if you can try and make that happen, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, okay. I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I got a feeling that's not where it ends up, but I'm by no means am I saying it's, it's out of the question. And to your point, no one knows. Like, I, I mean, I, I think if you gave Don Yee truth serum right now, you know what I mean? He couldn't tell you unequivocally where this path's going to end. This is, there's, there's more, there, this is not linear. It's not A to B. There's going to be more twists and turns and, and more meandering and more information gathering um, than Tom Brady's. Uh, this is it. This is, I mean, this is the first time he's ever embraced free agency, and I think he's going to embrace it fully and see where it leads. Jason, thanks for the time, man. Uh, congrats on your new show. You want to tell people how they can listen to it uh, around the yeah, around the country? Thanks. Go for it. In, yeah, Inside Access on uh, 105.7 The Fan in Baltimore. You can check it out nationwide on the radio.com app. Uh, we've got our caller, well, my old colleague, your still colleague, Brian Billick on today. We've got Kirk Ferentz from Iowa talking about Marshall Yonda. Um, we got we got all, everything you need, Rich. If you're a Baltimore fan, or even just a football fan, or maybe a sports fan, of not course. that I want to cut into your audience the, at all, but Jason, you know. first first of all, it's all good. Secondly, you're on a different time than me. Other, that's why I'm giving you the floor to tell us. I mean, okay, we don't overlap at all. I thought I, maybe there was like an hour or something. Uh, overlap, uh, but I'm not I'm not very good at math. <laughs> maybe we do overlap, but either way, uh, it's all good. <laughs> You're a good man, Thanks, Jason. We'll Always chat soon. Right back at you. That's Jason Lockenfor from CBS Sports.